An early start for our departure to San Blas. We do a final weather check for storms before we lift anchor. Just checking the radar again. Still pitch black, but in half, no, in six o'clock is sunrise, so should be able to see something by the what time we're on our way. Not showing anything. Just lifted anchor and we've left Linton Bay. It's about half past five in the morning and we're making our way towards San Blas now. And we're just following our old track through the reef system here. And then we've got about a 10 hour journey all the way to San Blas. Looks like we're gonna have a nice sunrise. Always a nice sunrise. I love watching the sunrises. A little bit of rain out there. Hopefully they pass by. So we've about 10 hours to go to get there. Rain stays away for now. So we've been going for about two and a half hours now, and we've just got the port engine on. Once we get the boat up to speed, we typically switch the one engine off and just keep one going. We're doing about five and a half knots now, and uh, yeah, that's good boat speed because we were hoping to do at least five to get there in good time whilst the sun's still up and make our way into the reef system. And we need the sun to be nice and high to do that so we can actually see where the shallow waters are. The boys are now nestling into a movie down there. And we've probably got about another seven hours to go. Seven and a half hours to go. Very black cloud up ahead. This way, get up. But um, we're trying to just see how far it is with the radar. At the moment, looks like, by eye, looks like we're heading straight into it, but it could be miles away. There's one left ahead, and then there's also one off to the side, I'm not sure if you can see. So we want to try and avoid those as much as possible. The bread is made. Is it rising? Another squall. Well, no wind really in this, just lots of rain. But visibility is very reduced. Our hopes for a sunny arrival are not looking good. I would say he has a wingspan of. What would you say? 50 million meters. About 10 centimeters? No, more than that. We are at San Blas, we're arriving in Holland Days at Keys. Bit of a swell here, a wreck in the shore up there to our port side, which is a bit worrying. But we're just going to take it slow and make our way in. 
So the other bit of software we've got running at the moment is Overtel Maps, which means you can download Google Earth images or Bing images, basically satellite images, and you can see your position on there and see the area that you're coming in on, which is fantastic. You can see where the reefs are, and in some cases coral heads if the image is good enough. Um, so fantastic bit of uh, information to have at our fingertips. Dill's wearing my glasses. Because Still in my pyjamas. Still in your pyjamas because they are Polaroid in his aunt so he can see the reefs. Nathy is ready and waiting to catch a fish for dinner. We've just been into the one anchorage, now we're just going to go and check out the other one where that other boat is. Come on, little reef then. That's a nice one to dive, Bill. This one. Everyone is getting very excited as we arrive at the first group of islands forming part of the sand glass. There are over 350 islands to explore, leading all the way down to the Colombian border. It's a hat on this one. There is an incredible reef system in the San Blas, providing an amazing underwater world to explore sheltered anchorages and dangerous navigation at the same time. We approach cautiously and are rewarded with one of the most beautiful anchorages we have ever been in. Nathan, yours is huge. Yeah. I obviously didn't portion out that dough very well, did I? Thank you for letting me have enough. Sheep is quite pizza wars on this boat, isn't it? Well, we pretty much are going to turn into a pizza soon. How's yours looking, Dill? I'm a Mexican. We dropped anchor just before sunset and celebrated with our favourite dinner. Yummy. Pizza. Yours is also huge. Clearly Nathan was still hungry after his pizza as we caught him trying to catch fish with his hands off the back of Makara. Oh, one dropped down to my finger. Cloud cover all around here today. That's our first morning in San Blas. We've woken up to a little breeze coming through here. And a lot of cloud cover, lots of lightning and thunder, but all very far in the distance. So we don't feel uh, threatened here at all. But quite a quite a scene to wake up to. The wind picks up. And as we had anchored too close to Friends Yacht, we start the engines as a precaution. Anchored quite close to this guy last night. So we're just checking that with this wind direction we don't swing into him. He's got his engine on as well. We've had a night at Anchorage. And um, this morning we are super close to our neighbour here, which we're obviously not happy about. Um, he was suggesting that we moved yesterday. Um, we didn't, and in hindsight we should have. Um, we said to him we'd move today. And now the weather's pretty grim. We don't have good visibility. But yeah, just always be extra careful when anchoring. Keep your distance if you can, because it's unfair on these guys that we're so close to them now, stressing them out. Um, so we do want to get out of here as soon as we can. Anchoring doesn't always go to plan, so we lifted the anchor and made our way to a safer area.
We've just moved Anchorage away from our poor friends that we were almost anchored on top of. And um, we're quite a way out. We're just off a little reefy, or a little reef that's got a sand spur off it. Don't know if you'll see it, but it's in front of us. Um, so we've got about 70 meters of chain out and we've got no other yachts around us. We've had 2000 RPM on the engines to make sure that anchor's well embedded and we taken the transit so we know where we are and we can make sure we're not dragging and we timed it perfectly the range just come back so um, well this is our new anchorage let's uh, keep ourselves dry the boys are off fishing In straight the away they want to catch us a nice uh, reef tip uh, no no, no great white. we were so excited to see the locals sailing in ulu and we wanted to show everyone but they were too far away we ended up with the GoPro and binoculars joined together to this, get this rather funny image. Ulu is the local name for a dugout canoe. Yeah. I've made this bread to send to our neighbours last night so to say sorry for our bad anchoring last night and hopefully they'll enjoy it. It's um, just a little peace offering. They, were, they weren't upset with us but it's nice just to give them something. And we're doing a delivery of pepper juice. To Rafiki. I don't really like pepper juice. No, we do. There we go. So that's for Rafiki and that's for Challenge. If I had a thousand songs, delivery with everyone. <laughs> Voices like a mountain song. <laughs> Um, no, we're just going to, I think, let the boat settle down there a bit and, uh, you know, the weather's not great, so we just want to make sure it's all good. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um, we're, in ten, we're in 10 meters. Yeah. So. With our deliveries complete, we make our way back to my car and pack away the dinner. Despite the bad weather, we still had a great day. We head to bed early with the hope that the sun is out in the morning. Great one. So who didn't get a load of green? Ow! Did you tell them? Sorry. The next morning we wake up to beautiful weather. What an incredible place San Blas is. It is no wonder some sailors get stuck here for years. We send up the drone to see what is around us and we gobsmacked by the view. We spot a shallow sandy patch and on taking a closer look we see specks on the sandy bottom. Starfish, hundreds of them. We couldn't wait to go and take a closer look so we hopped into the dinghy and made our way there, desperate to go into the water. Take a closer look. The starfish are moving along the sandy bottom. How is this possible? You can see hundreds of legs under the starfish, all working together. 
it definitely won't win any races. What are those little lumps on its back? Watch our next adventure school about starfish and we'll tell you. There were too many to count. We were all alone at our anchorage, which gave us this island to ourselves, surrounded by crystal clear water. The boys head off on their own to see what they can catch. Later, Claire and I join them. The island is covered in thick vegetation with towering palm trees with plenty of coconuts on them, known as the silent killers. If one of those massive coconuts fall on your head, you have no chance of surviving. The locals collect coconuts and most get exported to Colombia by trading boats. Until the late 1990s, this area's principal currency was the coconut. In recent years, the sale of molars replaced the sale of coconuts, as the Gunas number one revenue source. The Gunas are coconut barons. A good year's harvest reaches more than 30 million. Coconuts are traded with the Colombians, whose old wooden schooners can hold 50 to 80,000 coconuts. Okay, we don't need to snorkel here, we can just look in the water. Whoa! Incredible. Look at the fish in front of you, Nathan. Big? Oh, uh -huh. just little tropical ones. I want to swim. Little bait fish there. We fish off the dinghy, but only managed to catch a small barracuda which we put back in. You want to unhook him? Yeah. Come, bring him here. Said bring him here. No, I'm surprised he would eat a fish that size. Yeah, barras are very greedy fish. They're greedy. Look. Keep going, Bill. No. no? Oh, bait fish, Nathan, hold on. Bait fish? Yeah. Okay, I'm holding one. Jeez, the fishing here is no. extraordinary, hey guys. <laughs> are you let loose? He's swimming towards us. Ah, oh, he's off. Ah! Healthy unhooking. That was strong. Ah, I, that, was, <laughs> that was a jump. Show us your face. <laughs> the paddle boarding was amazing, as we often got larger fish following our boards for a long time. Look out for our next episode where we snorkel on a wreck. Feed sharks. And explore local houses. If you like our videos and would like to support us, please take a look at our Patreon page. The link is in the text below. Your support will help us buy better recording and editing equipment and it will also help us continue on our adventure.